Hi, Sean here. Welcome back to Understanding the American Revolution. This video three about slavery and the Declaration of Independence, perhaps a dangerous topic. I can already see those thumbs down starting to rack up. Okay, let's go back to the Declaration of Independence. Actually, I'm not going to show it on the screen this time, um, but look at if you have the text in front of you, and I, I will put a link in the description to a, a wiki source text of the, what we're working with, the Dunlap broadside. You'll notice what's conspicuously missing from the Declaration is a serious discussion of the issue of slavery. Well, slavery is largely unaddressed in the Declaration of Independence. And you might wonder why that is. Again, we're getting at sacred cows here and uh, what I call thought terminating cliches. The usual answer, whenever we talk about slavery, we're going to be talking a lot about slavery in this series, by the way, so just get ready for that. But usually when we talk about slavery in the context of the American Revolution, especially the Constitution, creation of the Constitution, when we talk about things like the Three-Fifths Compromise and stuff like that, the usual answer is that the uh, framers, we'll call them that, uh, dodged the issue of slavery because uh, southern states where uh, they had slavery, they were uncomfortable with that, and the north, northern states needed their unity in order to beat Britain or to coalesce the new United States or whatever, and therefore they took slavery off the table to avoid sparking division between north and south. So I want to, again, challenge that conventional wisdom. Is Do you think it's really that simple? Is it really that simple? And the reason why I think we can question whether or not that's really what was going on, once we get to the slavery section, you'll see that there's plenty of evidence that that is not, in fact, uh, what the analysis was at all. But uh, it depends, that analysis depends on a very clear division between northern states, which didn't have slavery, and southern states, which did. And as we'll see, the reality is that division is really murky in reality. It's not very clear. Even though slavery had been abolished or was in the process of being phased out in many of the northern states at the time of the revolution, they still profited mightily from slavery and from slavery-related enterprises. Okay, let's look at this. I'm going to show you another document here. <clears throat> We're going to see what was deleted from the Declaration of Independence. Okay, so this was uh, from the long train of abuses section. Uh, you remember that section, which is very important. Let me uh, zoom in on this one here. But this is a um, description of all the terrible things that King George has done. And this is what Jefferson originally wrote. He, meaning King George, has waged cruel war against human nature itself, violating its most sacred rights of life and liberty in the persons of a distant people who never offended him, captivating and carrying them into slavery in another hemisphere, or to incur miserable death in their transportation thither. I love that word, thither. He's talking about the slave trade, the middle passage, uh, very harrowing um, and going on for many hundreds of years, a process of uh, uprooting Africans from their homes, shipping them across the sea uh, to slavery in ships. That was depicted, uh, it's been depicted a number of times in movies, but the most graphic depiction I think you could find is the one in Steven Spielberg's 1997 film Amistad, which is very, very difficult to watch. But uh, this is the slave trade, which was a big, big issue. Um, Determined to keep open a market where men bought and sold, he has prostituted his negative for suppressing every leg legislative attempt to prohibit or restrain this exorable commerce. So he's Jefferson is sort of blaming King George for slavery. Does that seem a little thick, a little bit uh, uh, disingenuous coming from a slave owner himself? Jefferson had many slaves at Monticello, and in fact, uh, Monticello was built entirely by slave labor. So he's uh, blaming King George for the slave trade. Uh, does it surprise you? Well, it, maybe it shouldn't at this point surprise you that a slave owner wrote this. Um, now, keep in mind, this that passage that I just showed you was largely uh, about the actual slave trade itself. Now, the slave trade meaning the importation of slaves to the United States from abroad, had already been banned 
by the Continental Congress in 1774. We'll talk about that. Incidentally, it was revived after the revolution. Remember that my idea of perhaps the settlement of the revolution, meaning the constitution was perhaps a betrayal of the promises of the American revolution. That's just a thought. But in 1776, the slave trade had been banned by the Continental Congress. And many people saw a moral line between owning slaves on the one hand and engaging in the slave trade on the other. So here's what Jefferson said. Now, there was a great debate within the Continental Congress about this passage, and eventually it did end up on the cutting room floor. So what Jefferson said about this debate, I'm going to quote him directly. I don't, I don't have it on a, on a screenshot, but I'll quote it. He said, the clause reprobating the enslaving the inhabitants of Africa was struck out in complacence to South Carolina and Georgia. Our northern brethren also, I believe, felt a little tender under these censures, for though their people have very few slaves themselves, yet they have been pretty considerable carriers of them to others. Okay, think about what that means. So what I said at the beginning of this video is that I distrust the hypothesis that slavery was left off the table because North was afraid of offending South and we, you needed them all in the same boat during the revolution. So now Jefferson said something to that effect here, but he also says, let me repeat it. Northern brethren felt a little tender under these censures for though their people have very few slaves themselves, yet they have been pretty considerable carriers of them to others, meaning that the North also profited heavily from the slave trade. So attacking the slave trade, not just sla not, not slavery, we're not talking about that, but talking about the slave trade, attacking that in the Declaration is attacking a significant source of economic benefit for the northern states. Not just the southern states that benefited directly from slavery, but the northern states that embedded benefited from their importation. Interesting thought. So a couple other uh, just unresolved questions from the Declaration. Um, does the document go far enough? If you read the Declaration of Independence, it's, it's revolutionary, sure, and it impels the separation or declares the separation between uh, the colonies, former colonies and Britain. But is it revolutionary enough? Is it too revolutionary? Did they go too far? Why, why not stay British? Could you frame the document in terms of where Englishmen were guaranteed certain inalienable rights and it's precisely our Englishness which enables us to secure those rights? Now, that was a really common argument in the years before 1776. And there's a sense that after that about 1776 is about the time when that argument became unpersuasive. So is it a bluff? is the de what is this declaration committing its declarants to do? So think about this, a counterfactual. What if we'd lost the Revolutionary War? Meaning that these promises went unfulfilled, that we tried to fight Britain for our independence, we'd lost, and we stayed British colonies. Would the declaration have been forgotten? Had that happened, might there have been another attempt at revolution at some later time? Hint, War of 1812? I don't know. If you answered yes to this question, could the British ever have won? Would they have been forever doomed to face an insurgency that they could never really stamp out? That's a possibility as well. So uh, we're finished with the declaration. We're going to move on to some uh, other topics in the next video. But I hope this has been helpful to you to uh, imagine some of the dimensions within the Declaration of Independence and how they remain unresolved today. And there's still so many questions about them. Okay, the usual shtick, like, subscribe, share, you know what to do. My Patreon, that link is in the uh, description as well. I'll put a link to uh, also the page that I just showed you. Uh, and uh, subscribe to my email list if you'd like to do that. That's a lot of fun. See you in the next video. Thanks.